Hi everybody, Jesse here from jessiebanks.com and welcome to a video featuring my favorite things. So I decided to pull out some things I've had in my collection for a while that I haven't used. I have this barn die, which I think is absolutely freaking adorable. I also have the uh, farm fence die as well that I added a little bit of that into the card. And then I have the green pasture stamp set. This was one that I do believe they brought back. I'm not sure if it's still available. If it is, I mean all the things will be linked in the description box below. So first off, I pulled out some red poppy cardstock and I die cut that out using my, um, what is it? Grad mark from AccuCut. And then I pulled out some markers and I'm starting off with R89 and I'm adding some dark red shading to the bottom here. And then we'll slowly blend that out with some lighter colors. I just wanted to add a little bit of definition into um, the die cut itself as opposed to it just being flat red. So R08 follows that and then we'll use some R05 and some colorless blender just to make sure it fades back in beautifully and seamlessly to that red cardstock. It's, I actually contemplated color, cutting this out of white and completely coloring it from blank. I may want to do that still in the future, but I decided to do things a little faster being it was my first time playing with this die. This one was super fun. I really had a blast playing with items I've had for a very long time and haven't used, which is terrible and I need to get better at that. I also just enjoyed creating something for fun. So I cranked up the speed here. We're at like six and a half times the speed and we're just flying through the rest of the coloring on the barn here. This is the exact same process. I did a little bit slower there in the first clip and I'm just going to finish off the rest of it. I decided instead of making you guys painstakingly watch me color this, I would crank up the speed for you. So happy Thanksgiving to all of my American friends. I hope you're definitely enjoying the holiday. I know it's not going to be a typical Thanksgiving, but nonetheless, relax, have some fun, smile, and enjoy things as best you can. Other than that, I got nothing. I'm working. <laughs> Welcome to my life. So once we get this all colored up, we will move on to the white pieces for this die. I really love how this card came together. I do add a little bit of red detail yet to the barn doors that I forgot about a moment ago. Um just to create a little bit of shadow and some dimension in behind the white panels that are going to go on top of the door once we do the rest of the die cut here. Also that blank square up at the top, I did forget to film me coloring it after, but I decided to use just a lot of the R89 and the completely color the rest in with the R08 just to give it a little bit more of a shadowed look to tuck in there. I didn't like seeing the sky poke through the hole. I thought it looked really silly, so I had to put that piece back in there. This is super messy blending. I wasn't doing anything fancy. Some of it's on the die cut. Some of it didn't even get on the die cut. It's all good. So I started off with the W1 marker, and then I have the W00 marker just to blend that out a little bit. Again, I'm not making sure it's pretty. I just wanted to add a little bit of dimension there so that the cardstock wasn't a flat white just to add a little bit of color to it. Scribbled out some colorless blender to try and make sure that that transitions back into the white of the cardstock without a harsh line. And then we'll adhere all of these pieces onto our card bait or onto our little barn die cut here using the Simon Says Stamp liquid adhesive. It's what I currently have on hand. It works wonderful. I really, really like it. So we're just going to put the glue on the barn die and then stick the white parts to it. And I'm going to follow that through for the whole for all the other pieces as well. When we get to the little doors, you guys will see I finick with them a little bit just to get the doors to fold open. Initially, I was going to put like critters and things in behind, and then I decided I actually preferred the look of the barn door shut, so I didn't even have to go through all of that trouble, but that's okay. I think it turned out really really pretty. So, glue on those doors, fold them open. You'll see the one kind of pops off. I have to put it back on once I get the door folded. It still worked out wonderfully. Now we're going to pull out the Extreme Black ink. This is one of my favorites for Copic coloring. It's nice and sharp and black. I do outline it with a black marker after simply because I prefer to have it super bold and jumping into my typical Copic coloring when it comes to images. Um, on the skin tone, I'm using E04, E11, E21, E no, E51 and E50 and then R02 for the cheeks. 
and I'm starting off with the darker color and then slowly layering the lighter colors over top of it going over top of the darker color to give you a blend into the lighter color I feel like I repeat that all the time but that's okay there's new people watching I hope you guys enjoy this nonetheless um, again the R21 over top of those other two colors just working to have a nice blend of colors so it's a seamless transition and it doesn't look stripey around her face adding in those cheeks before I add in my lightest color that's so that I can use that lightest color to help me blend out the little rosy cheeks so they're not quite as dotted as they originally looked into the hair it's the same thing as the face I'm going from darkest and then we'll come in with some E43 and some E41 to finish that one off. Just everywhere that the hair, that the curls kind of crimp together where you would see a shadow or a little bit of a tighter spot on the hair is where I'm adding the darkest color. That'll give it a nice little wavy feel to the hair. Um, it's really nice with the artist on lines to be able to follow those. Where hair folds in front, you always make sure that the back hair has a little bit of a shadow. It kind of walks you through it step by step if you those lines and just take your time. It takes some practice. It's never going to be perfect the first time. Now, this is where I thought forever. I was like, I want to give her blue jeans, but I really don't want to give her a red t-shirt. I gave her black pants. I ended up giving her a red shirt anyway, so I could have given her the blue jeans I really wanted to, but that's okay. <laughs> some things just don't work out the way you initially intended it. So again, her black pants, I did go with a green brown for her hat and her boots, which I actually like. I use the E80 series. Um, they're a very greeny type brown starting off again, darkest to lightest. Um, I do try to put the caps to, I guess, your left of the image there. So you can see as I'm using. I usually remember to do that. It's become a fair bit of a habit once in a while. I've, um, so E87 over top of that lighter color or that darker color to blend it out into the lighter one. Um, I'm off screen with the boots. I apologize. I'm getting back into the... I kept my head out of the way. That's a bonus. Can I get a hero cookie for that one? Because usually you see my black hair in this. <laughs> I kept the top of the boots darker and then the toe patch that would be on there made in separate leather. I did make in a lighter version of the same color. So I just left the E89 out of it and started with the E87. Now we're going to do her shirt. So for the back of her shirt, I use the R08 and the R05. And then for the front of her shirt, my darkest color is the R05. And I work through and get lighter. So we go to R02, 01, and then the double zero or triple zero. I can't remember offhand. It'll, uh, it'll show me momentarily here to blend it out. Just kept it like a really light, soft, almost worn out looking red, kind of like something she's been in forever, I guess. I think it turned out really, really pretty. Um, yeah, like I said, could have given her the blue jeans I wanted to. It's our triple zero. <laughs> so then I'm going to take my micron and outline it and my scissors and fussy cut her out. And there she is. Now I am going to pull out that fence die and we're going to die cut that out of the white paper. And again, color that up with the W1 and the W00 again, just to give it a little bit of life. I do end up not using the little gate there that I'm fighting and fighting and fighting to get color. Um, and I end up just using a small piece of the fence, but I do really like the way it looks on the card itself. So pull out all of those center pieces and then I've got all of this put together. Now we've got our card base. This is where the fun happens. So I pulled out two of the cloud stencils as well as the grass stencil. I only ended up using the mini clouds and I start off just by giving it a nice light wash of the salty ocean blue up at the top just to kind of figure out where I wanted the grass line to be and to make sure that there was a, tra a smooth transition between the two and there was no stark white. So now I'm going to take this green peeled paint and I'm going to use the grassy border stencil. I think it's called grassy edges. Again, I'll have it linked in the description box below and starting off with the distress ink in peeled paint. I just do a nice coat of that and then I'm starting in with the distress oxide. So I have the bundled sage and I'm just adding that in different areas and then I'm going to pull out the peeled paint in the oxides. Again, that's a slightly different color than the distress ink simply because it is an oxide. And then I take the pine needles and I just darken up the edges and give it a little bit more depth right around the outside. Now we're going to take the tumbled glass oxide 
and start stenciling in some of these clouds using the mini cloud stencil. And then I have the blueprint sketch ink. So I'm going to add the blueprint sketch ink and then I'm going to go over top of it with the tumbled glass just to have a little bit of a smoother transition so that the inks didn't look quite so stark against each other. Probably could have grabbed the blueprint sketch oxide, but I didn't. These are the two colors I brought out. So that's what I used. And I just kind of work back and forth and kind of randomly rotate the clouds around so I'm not using the exact same ones everywhere and adjusting where I put the lighter and the darker colors and just kind of flip flopping to give it a little bit of life. And then you'll see now I'm working at that bottom corner. I'm slightly off frame. I apologize. But I'm just adding some down there so that it wasn't quite so bright just before the grass. Most of this is getting covered up with the um, barn dye. Let's be honest. I didn't even have to work that hard on it. So we're going to add the barn dye on top of our red card base once we adhere that. And then I'm going to use that liquid adhesive from Simon Says again to adhere down the fence dye. And then I'll take my little scissors and cut it off and glue it onto the other side once we get our barn adhered down. So you'll see me clip it, clip that off, even it up with the edge of our colored panel, not the red card base. I'm picky, personal preference, you could have left it. Then I'm just going to put a little tiny bit of it on the other side of the barn as well to complete that fence. Clip that one off. And now I have the, what is it called? The skinny strips die. And I'm going to cut out the little banner. And then I'm going to use the How's It Going stamp set from the farming one from Pure Innocence. I don't know what it's called. Off the top of my head. Here it is. It is called... Um, the Pure Innocence Farmer Girl. So that's the How's It Growing from there. And then we're going to pop our little lady up on some foam dots, add here down the How's It Growing banner using, again, that liquid adhesive. And that'll be if, oh, no. Then we're going to pull out some W markers. I think I used W5 and W3 because the W3 wasn't quite dark enough. Just to add a little bit of shading underneath of her feet and around the barn and underneath of the fence posts. And that's it for today's card, you guys. I had a blast coloring this one up. I know it's not my usual style, but I think it turned out really, really pretty. Again, all the links to all of the products used will be in the description box below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you aren't subscribed to my channel, I'd love for you to subscribe. And I will see you very soon for another one. Bye for now.